So I was just reading my beloved state-funded CBC about how the bad orange man's thriving economy is forcing Justin Trudeau to spend more money and put the country deeper in debt. The Liberal government is spending billions to help corporate Canada compete with the US and to prop up struggling news organizations. That's right, in 2018, journalists get bailouts too. The Liberals, who promised during the 2015 election campaign to cap deficits at $10 billion and balance the books by 2019, are now forecasting a $19 billion shortfall this fiscal year. The deficit will, the, the budget will balance itself. Conservative finance critic Pierre Polivre said public tax dollars should not be used in an election year to set up a panel who will determine which media survive and which don't. We think the media should be independent from the government, he said. We should not have a situation where the government picks a panel who then gets to decide who reports the news. That's very dangerous. The man banned from entering India due to his connection to a terrorist cell, NDP leader Jagmeet Singh, said government support is absolutely important to the goal of maintaining robust journalism. The approach of providing supports is something necessary, he said adding the government could help by spending advertising dollars in local newspapers instead of on giants like Google and Facebook. I've also seen government ads on pirated sites like MMA Junkie and I'm pretty sure some anime sites do. Just Dragon Ball Super. And only the first few episodes, come on. If you're at all interested in that show, episode 39 was fucking amazing. I just keep that number in my head because the artwork was incredible. Anyway, I wouldn't have made a video on that. It's what I saw when I got to the bottom of the article, which is why I'm making this video. Rake America Great Again. Finns mock Trump over forest raking comment. So I clicked on it. And to my surprise, I saw CBC Kids News. Hello, what do you think of our new site? Let us know. Well, I think I will. In blind despair, take your pen Buy any glimpse of freedom Sell your soul to buy some time Infect all your longings The thought that God has taken sides On the path to breaking down Disconnected but not alone Scream to the tune of the background noise Trump's raking the forest comment lights up social media. Finnish people pose with rakes after US president says they regularly clean their forests. Trump appears to have got it wrong when he said people in Finland spend a lot of time raking and cleaning their forests as a way to fight wildfires. The Finnish president said to the newspaper he spoke with Trump about how they take care of their forests earlier this month, but said raking didn't come up. So apparently this was rake news. This article seems to do what Snopes does, is take one word or phrase out of context and use it to debunk the entire article. Earlier this month, the US president took to Twitter to blame mismanagement of the forest for California's deadly wildfires. In a Fox News interview taped November 16th, he said he was surprised to see firefighters removing dead brush from the fire zone. This should have all been raked out, he said. In what almost seems a non sequitur, the dean of the University of Michigan's environmental school, John Overpeck, said climate change is another major factor. So I suppose they're admitting that the management was a major factor. Rising temperatures are drying out the forests, shrubs, and grasslands that are burning in California, he said. And if you know anything about the history of California, you'd know that pretty much the entire history is about drought. But some scientists have said logging can make wildfires worse. And some scientists are full of shit. More stories you might like. What is a caravan of migrants? Cue the heartstring music. There's not a huge sense here amongst these migrants who've invested nearly three weeks already that they're going to quit. 
I heard you recently were following a big story. This is about the caravan. Can you tell us about that experience? Yeah. You may have seen some of the pictures of these people, thousands of them, who left their home uh, over a month ago with almost nothing, and they started walking. And they walked through, they're in their third country now, and they're trying to get to a fourth country, which is the United States. You know, so I have to So they started in Honduras, shit. which is in Central America, so at the bottom of Mexico. At least with the UK TV and license. And they left there, you can many find of them ways told to me, because it. it was so this unsafe. This shit is mandatory. There's a lot of gangs and a lot of drugs in Honduras, and the gang members threatened them and threatened their families. And they decided, you know, really tough decision. They decided, look, we don't have any future here for our kids like your age and younger. So we think maybe we could get to the United States where it might be a better future. Yeah, that's all right. There's lots of future why here. People, they like, can take including ours. President Trump, um, why do they fear people coming into their own country? Well, that's a good question. Uh, the U.S. president, you know, was facing an election recently, at least his party was, and the midterm elections in the United States. And he believed that there were a lot of his supporters who were really afraid about the people coming over their borders. Propaganda and he decided that it was important to reassure those people that they shouldn't be afraid. What's, What's happened, happened on that? That is fucking disgusting. What the fuck Mexico am I looking at? Oh, I guess I shouldn't say that on this video. Across that border frequently, and some of them go in illegally. So they will actually run across the border trying to hide from immigration officials to try to get into the United States. Many others go in and say, you know what, I have a terrible home. I am facing violence and people are after me and I need a safe place to live and that's called asylum. Do you think it's fair to be cautious that since migrants from a very dangerous country, like there might be thugs that could easily slip in to this whole caravan? Yeah, I think that's a fair a question. Is. So there's a lot of people in that caravan who have nothing to do with crime. Yes, there could be some who are using that caravan as a way to get away with something. Hopefully, at the border, they're going to be asked those tough questions. And while you were on this caravan, what did you encounter? What did it feel like? What did it look like? They started walking really early in the morning because it's so hot. So they would start walking between four Unless and five Unless the people they're the detaining morning. have children. And they would pack right? up whatever they had. It's only what you could carry. So if you were in the caravan, you could only take your backpack, maybe some food for the, the day, and they would head out on the road. So you had in the darkness, you'd see these massive groups of people walking along. And I have a picture in one of my stories about a little girl who was waiting for the caravan to begin. It was four o'clock in the morning in the dark and she was looking through a coloring book. And I thought, oh my goodness, this is no way for children to live. What do you think will happen next? So what will happen next? Well, they'll probably get to the border. They'll probably apply for asylum, some of them. And then they'll be stuck for a long time trying to figure out whether they'll be able to start their life again. And some of them, Ari, will, as I described, run across that border because that's what they, they want to do. It's illegal, and they will try to test that. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you, Susan, and hopefully we'll be able to see each other again. I'm Ari Resnick for CBC Kids News. They, they, they want, want to do, it's illegal. illegal. And of course, if you go to the YouTube page, comments are blocked. That's funny, a moment ago it had two dislikes. But I suppose I've passed my first milestone as a YouTube creator. I have more subscribers than my state-funded propaganda outlet. What may cause this magnification of the importance of certain things is that your mind seems to be racing along.
was slain, but the 